How's it going everyone? My name is Jake and I'm here with a free VST AAX plugin review. Today we are listening to the work of the TDR Nova Parallel Dynamic Equalizer. This plugin is a complete four band fully parametric EQ and compressor and I must say, I'm pretty impressed. In this video I'm going to give you a sample of how the plugin sounds as well as the good and not so good qualities that this free plugin has to offer. Before we jump into this review, I want to know from any viewer what would make these videos better what would make this information more understandable and easier to apply to your mixes. Also let me know if you like my videos and give me a thumbs up, subscribe, turn on your notifications. Any of this is a huge help. I've got a bunch of ideas and, and any feedback that you guys have will help me to create better, more informative content for you. So without further ado, let's jump into this video. All right, so the TDR Nova is a combined EQ and compressor, as you can see. And there's a couple of things that I want to bring out to your attention that give this compressor its own feel, you know, gives it some good qualities and some bad. So the first thing that I noticed before I really started working or uh, learning this plugin was that right off the bat, the filters give you an option to go up to the 72 dB per octave slope, which is pretty impressive if you think about it. That really allows you to cut off those frequencies right at that right at that knee of the filter. So that was pretty cool. I mean, if you take a look at, let's see, um, pull up this EQ7 band here. If you take a look at this, it only goes up to 24, so that's three times steeper slope, which is, you know, not necessary all the time, but it's definitely nice to add and gives it a bit more versatility. So the next thing that I noticed while working with this EQ was that there's only four bands four fully parametric bands of EQ that you you have to work with. You know, it's it's not a huge thing to think about cuz but it's just it's one of those things where if I pull this other EQ7 band back up here, you have five and just having that one extra band allows you to really work with the sound with the EQ for, um the EQ map a lot a lot more and it I don't know, it's just it's one of those things where if you want to take out another frequency, you have to pull up a whole nother instance of this plugin or another pl plugin, which, you know, it, like I said, it's not a huge deal, adds a bit of processing to the computer, um, but it's just one of those things where it would be nice to add another band or two just for even more versatility. One thing that I do really love about this plugin is the lack of coloration that the boosts give to the element that you're EQing. So let's take a look at this guitar here. As you can see, I did a little bit of boosting in the higher higher range of the frequency spectrum on this guitar here. Let's bypass it and listen to the guitar without the without the EQ. So with even this like significant amount of boost right here, I boosted a little over three. This is around 3 dB. So that's like, it's a rather significant boost in these certain frequency ranges, and especially because I have a shelf here. But even with all of that boosting, it really doesn't make too much difference to the sound quality. And it still doesn't sound like I'm adding a processor to the element. And it just, it sounds rather natural. And that's something that I really enjoyed about it. It has a definitely a mild characteristic where you can really find that that range that you're looking to boost and it doesn't affect the overall sound in a negative way. So for the next thing that I noticed, let's take a look at the bass here. One of the big things that I was not as fond of is kind of going along with how I said the EQ was very mild and how I enjoyed that because you can make such small changes and really dial in that that setting that you're looking for however with the compressor on the other hand it is very sensitive let's take a look at what i did here with the bass and the compression settings here so to start the first thing that you might notice is that i have 3.5 db of gain on the compressor and 4.2 on the total output of this processor so that is getting up to almost 8 db of of, of added gain which is quite a quite a large amount and then you also look at my ratio is not even at four. Four is usually the standard that I start with and either dial back or dial up depending on how much more I want to 
compress the sound. And also, you look at the threshold, the threshold's not up very high. I mean, I still have another, you know, 60%, 66% that I could raise it up. So it's one of those things where even though this isn't dialed in too, 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 too much, the it's co hitting the compressor very hard and it's a very sensitive processor for that. So let's take a listen to see what this compressor does at these settings. So almost no dynamic level change. And I'm also adding 8 dB of gain to the whole element, which is quite crazy if you think about it. And what this means is essentially, I have to be way more specific and it's way harder to hit that perfect setting on the, on the compressor because each increment that you move up with any of these parameters is so sensitive and quickly responds. So it's harder to find that exact setting that you're looking for. So the last thing that I wanna mention before we take a listen to this compressor is kind of the visual appeal of the whole plugin. For the most part, I think it looks very nice. It has this nice, the nice animations of the compressor that you see here. It kind of helps you visualize your attack and release time a bit, which is, which is a nice, you know, a nice element to add. It's, it makes it more visually appealing. However, my only complaint is that the attack and release here are not are not in the knob form. When they're such arbitrary numbers like this, it's hard to tell where on the spectrum you're landing. Versus when you have a, a knob, you can kind of see where you're where you are in terms of attack and release. For example, I'm gonna pull up a different compressor here. This is one of my go-to's, the FG Gray. And if you look here, I have this attack time and this release time in which I can kind of see on the spectrum of fast to slow where I am. Whereas like this is in the middle. I know I'm having, you know, a rather an, a release time in kind of the middle of the whole spectrum. Whereas when we go back over to the TDR Nova, it's kind of hard to detail that out. You know, you could say like, oh, we're at 40 milliseconds here. Is that, is that a fast, is that, you know, how is that affecting the compressor is that really fast or really slow? Uh, you, what you have to do is you have to bring it all the way up and to realize how fast or how slow the signal is compressing due to the specific processor. So that's just a small little nitpick that I would prefer a different visualization of. However, once again, not a huge deal. I'm always more focused on the sound quality. So speaking of sound quality, let's go ahead and see what the work of this compressor, what this EQ and compressor has done to this mix. So to, com to test this plugin, what I did was I added only one instance of the compressor to every single element in the mix. Doing this, it really tested the power and the capability, as well as it kind of helped me on the fast track to learning how to effectively use this plugin. So let's take a listen to everything without any mixing, just a couple level changes here. I'm gonna start to slowly add these in. As you can tell, it has you know a rather subtle change to it. Although it does make each help to make each element clearer. 
Now, I, I really do think this is a great performing plugin. It has its specific uses. I definitely not, would not use it as I did here. I was mostly just using using this method to see you know the full potential of this plugin. Before we finish up here, I want to let you know I will leave the link uh, to this pl free plugin in the description. So check that out if you're interested. You know, let me know what you think on how this plugin works and if I'm maybe missing something that brings out the potential of it a bit more. Um, and stay tuned. I got more more free plugin reviews coming on the way and more mixed walkthroughs. So hopefully I'll see you in my next video. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.